a doppelganger. You guys know what a doppelganger is? No, ma'am. A doppelganger is what somebody calls somebody that looks exactly like you. And so when I went to Baldwin Wallace College, for those of you who didn't know, I went there for four years, and I had somebody that looked exactly like me that I didn't know for the longest time. And it was so bizarre because there was one day that my professor, he was like, hey, how was your shift at the rec center? How did that go? I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, like, how was it working at the gym last night? You know, we were talking, you took my card. I was like, bro, I was not at the gym last night. He's like, no, I had an exact conversation. Now, this is a professor that I've had for like half a year. So it's like, how many bizarre interactions have that professor and that strange girl had? And he thought it was me, very strange. And I was like, no, really, I don't. Well, then it started to keep happening. Everywhere that I would go, people would say like weird things to me. Hey girl, so I hear, heard you're in this sorority. I'm like, I am not in a sorority. And so I found out that I had a doppelganger. And so I finally saw her on campus, and it's like, you know, when you have a doppelganger, you're like, should I mention it? Should I say that we're, you know, hey, you're that person for me. Am I for you? But I didn't. It was just, it was awkward. Everybody say awkward. It was awkward. And maybe you've also had where you go into a store, and people think that you work there. Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah? I went to a store one time, and I was in it, and I had like three people come up to me in one visit, and they started asking me where different products was. And I'm like, why? Why? Why are you asking me these things? Well, it turned out I'm in Target, and I have on a bright red shirt. And so everybody's coming up and asking me. So note to self, don't ever wear a bright red shirt to Target, or people might start asking you where the toilet paper is. Yeah, it's like, all right, so just send them out. Just, you should just leave. Just tell them that. Just leave. So maybe you've been confused, you go to different places, and so a lot of us are known by different things. When it came to, that, to the doppelganger that I had at Baldwin Wallace, it was because, I guess people told me it was because she had blonde hair and she had a big side sweat bang and she was always smiling. Well, that was me in college. Blonde hair, side sweat bang, always smiling. So they related us. When you go to Target, I'm expecting the employees to have red on, so you kind of related that. You know, Nick, he goes to Walmart, he's talking about the blue. And so there's these different things that you can relate, and when you think of that person that's what you think of and that's what sets them apart you guys get what I'm saying when I go to Target I know the employees because they've got red on when I go here I know the employees because of this whatever and so I was thinking about the question this week what is it that should separate us as Christians that people go that's a Christian what is it is it if I wear a cross necklace is it if I wear a blessed hat is it if I'm walking around smiling all the time? Is it if I said the prayer one time? Is it that I got baptized one time? Is it that I, you know, sometimes call out to God? What is it that separates us that I should be able to look and say, that's a Christian? Because there's a lot of people going around saying that they're a Christian and that believe in God. Am I right? There's a lot of people, pretty much a lot of people that you talk to are like, yeah, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, I would call myself a Christian. Yeah, I celebrate Christmas. You know, whatever. So what is it that should set us apart? And I want to tell you guys this evening that there's a whole lot that should set us apart if it's real for us, okay? And so I want to read with you guys, if you have your Bible, if not, it's going to be up on the screen. If you're taking notes, write this down. It's in Romans 8, 11. It says this, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I'm going to say it again. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. You. Everybody say, whoa. Now that's pretty amazing. You can hear it, you can read it, but there's some powerful stuff there, baby. We're going to break it down. The first part that we're going to break down is raised Jesus from the dead. Everybody say, dead. Now this ain't like some, hey, kind of dead. This is raised from the dead. Right there, because of what you believe in, because of what you've partnered with, because the Bible says that you are a son and a daughter of God, you are connected to Jesus who was raised from the dead. You are connected to that kind of amazing power that Jesus would love us so much that he would not only come to this earth in the form of little baby that we celebrate on Christmas, grow up, be able to teach, perform miracles, do all these amazing things, die on a cross and defeat death, hell, and the grave and sin for who? For you and me. That instantly sets us apart because I don't know about you, but not everyone can say that they have had somebody that has died for them. But we can. 
We can say that we had somebody who died for us and his name is Jesus Christ. Not only did he die for us, but he died for us so that we could have life and life abundantly now. And he was raised from the grave. That separates us, that we're connected to Jesus because of what he's done on the cross. Died, rose again to establish forgiveness and to pair us back up with God so that we could be reunited the way that it was always meant to be. Now that's amazing. So I'm not just some Joe Smo walking around on the sidewalk. I was somebody who was bought, who was purchased, who has been set apart, who is connected with Jesus Christ, who is literally a co-heir to the throne of God. It's amazing. Wow. That's pretty phenomenal. Now, some people get sick of hearing about what Jesus has done on the cross. Yes, 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 I've heard that Jesus loves me. I've heard that Jesus died for me. I heard that he rose again three days later. I heard he defeated death hell in the grave so that we can have life. blah de blah de blah de blah blah Some of you, if you're honest, that's the kind of thing you think when you begin to hear about what Jesus has done for you again because you've heard it before. But the truth is, what Jesus has done should always be the thing that you and I go back to. Always. It should be the thing that we look at and we say, that's it. You know, in the Old Testament, there was one thing that they always went back to. And if you read the book of Psalms and you read different things in the Bible, you'll see them always going back to this moment. And it was the splitting of the Red Sea with Moses. For those of you who don't know what happened there, you have the Israelites, they're in bondage, they're in slavery for over for 400 years. It's crazy, it's terrible. Well, God literally sets them free. free. You guys hear me stuttering? <laughs> sets them free through Moses in this amazing way, the Red Sea splits, they walk through and they have deliverance. Now every time they're going through a difficult situation, they're going through a situation they don't understand, they're going through having different problems, going through different things, whatever, they always go back and they say, God, we remember that you are the God that splits the Red Sea for us. We remember what you did for our ancestors. We remember who you were in the time of trouble. We remember who you were that you came through and you freed us in a miraculous way. And for us, it is supposed to be what Jesus did on the cross that we say, boom, that's the difference between my life then and my life now. It's what he's done for us. It's kind of like a page of references. You guys ever had to do that when you write a report? You had to do like references. Izzy, what's it called? It's a reference page. It's a reference page. So when I write a paper, and I can write all of this stuff. I can give you all these facts. I can say all this stuff. But unless I have my reference page that I can go back and I can refer to, it doesn't really mean anything. I can write this whole thing and I can say, oh, you know, such and such happened in 1862. And it's like, okay, prove it. Well, for us, we can bank on that we have joy, that we have peace, that we have life, that we have eternity to spend with God, that we have life and life abundantly now, that there's freedom for us, that there's deliverance for us now. Why? Because we can bank on it because of what Jesus done. That's our reference. What Jesus did on the cross, that is my reference that I look and I say, everything comes from this one thing. That's pretty amazing. Everything comes from what he did. And just like in the Old Testament, they go and they take a look and they remember the Red Sea. We are called to remember what he has done for us. Came, died, rose again, defeated death, hell, and the grave for you and me. Greater, for real. That's what we're to remember and to call back on. So that verse says, who raised Jesus from the dead. We talked about it, raised Jesus from the dead. Now here's the other part that I want to talk about. Because Jesus dying on the cross is phenomenal, it's amazing, but what's next is the crescendo. Do you guys know what a crescendo is? Crescendo, somebody said. Da, 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 da. Right? The music is crescendoing, it's growing, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger to this one point and it's like, whoa! The crescendo of the cross is God placing his Holy Spirit within us. The crescendo of the cross, the building, the building, the amazing thing that he's done is what happened when he came and he placed his Holy Spirit within us, which is what that verse that we talked about at the beginning, Romans 8, 11 says. It says, the Spirit of God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. Turn to your neighbor and says, lives in you. 
Turn to the other one, it says lives in you. Lives in you. So not only what Jesus did on the cross is so amazing, but literally the Holy Spirit has boom, come and lives within you and me. He lives within us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says it this way. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? He's saying, uh, hello, Bob, Fred, George, whoever. Do you not get it? The Holy Spirit, the one who raised Christ from the dead, that power that said, hey, death has no hold, sin has no hold, is living in each and every one of you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's amazing. That's set apart. Because you know the truth is, wherever we go, we carry him with us. It's time tonight that you know what you carry. For too long, we've been going around, we've been acting like everybody else, we've been doing the same thing as everyone else. When we carry such a power, such a glory, such an amazing God living within us that it should set us apart and let us stand differently and look differently. Wherever I go, when the Holy Spirit, if I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit, that means that when I'm in Walmart, he's with me. That means that when I'm in school, he's with me. That means when I'm eating a Big Mac with Knessa on break, he's with me. Vanessa works at McDonald's. That means that when I'm getting my hair done, he's with me. When I'm sleeping, he's with me. And it's not in a weird way, it's in a wow. The Holy Spirit is within me and always longing to have relationship with us. That's cool, man. Wherever you go, you carry him with you. Whatever circumstance you're walking into, you carry him with you. Obviously, I'm very pregnant. You guys see this? This is not fat kind of some, it's baby, okay? Eight months pregnant, wherever I go, I carry this baby with me. I can't just be like, hey baby, you hang out over here and I'm gonna go over here today. No, 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 we're doing this thing together. When I go to the bathroom, baby's with me. When I'm hanging out with my friends, baby's with me. Wherever I go, baby is with me. Now obviously the Holy Spirit is not in you like a weird baby, it's not that kind of a thing. He's with you by the Spirit, but he's with you everywhere you go. That's the power you carry with you. And so many of us are just living like whatever. <laughs> We're just doing whatever, but he's with us. It's kind of like an ambassador. Like if somebody goes over to another country and they're an ambassador of the United States, they carry with them the authority of the United States, right? They represent the United States. They take the United States with them. Here they go. The Bible says that we are ambassadors of Christ. He's literally within us, and where I go, I carry him wherever. It's pretty amazing. I carry him wherever I go. Everybody say carry. Carry, I carry him with me. Now what's sad is that we have this power within us we have this truth, we have this amazing glory, and our lives and the way that we live our lives look the exact same as everyone else. That's a tragedy. The tragedy that God has come and he has said, I place my Holy Spirit within you and you're walking the same way and you're doing the same things and you're hanging out with the same people and you're talking the same way and you're walking the same way and you're just living the same way when the God of the universe has placed his precious Holy Spirit, the treasure of heaven within you. That's a tragedy. For somebody to live like they're just the same. You get saved, you believe in God, but nothing changes. You get saved, you accept him as your personal savior, but you still struggle with the same things over and over and over again. You live the same way, you post the same things on social media, it's terrible. And I can remember living my life that way where I gave my life to God at a young age. I said the prayer, I said I believe him, but it didn't change for me right away. And it doesn't for a lot of people because we don't know what we carry. We don't know what we carry when we say yes to Jesus. When we say yes, boom, it's placed within us and it instantly sets us apart, whether we wanna believe it or not. And I can remember just living my life saying yes to Jesus, but I'm talking the same way, I'm walking the same way, the same kind of things are coming out of my mouth. And the thing that stinks is that when we live that way, it not only affects us, but it affects other people because that power that we carry is meant to touch other people around us. 
What are you missing out on because you're not knowing what you carry? This whole thing reminded me of, a, of an old movie. It's probably old to some of you guys, but how many of you guys like like romantic comedies, old kind of things? Do you guys like kind of stuff like that? How many of you guys have ever heard of the movie The Princess Diaries? <laughs> yes, uh, Shelby said, yes. Uh. Well, The Princess Diaries is one of my favorite movies, but it's really goofy. And it totally reminded me of this whole situation. And I want to play the trailer for you guys. Now, don't be too mean on it because it's an old trailer, okay? You guys, you guys are not going to be too critical, okay? All right, go ahead and put that up for me. Let's watch this. There she is right there. That's me at Thermopolis. Glamour, romance, fame. Mia Thermopolis had it all, but only in her dreams. As always, this is as good as it's going to get. Her real life was completely ordinary. You're way tense. <gasps> but now, something's about to happen. Your grandmother called. This is the first time she's ever contacted us. What you want? That will change everything. I am queen of Genovia. Whoa, whoa. And you are princess. Shut up! Just in case, I'm not enough of a freak already. <laughs> What's that, a tiara? I can teach you to walk, talk, sit, stand like a princess. Woo! Let the work begin. We don't schlump like this. It's a question of taste. Princesses never cross their legs in public. Tuck one ankle behind the other. A matter of grace. Oh, oh. What kind of dancing do you do? Where is the beautiful girl? My granddaughter, Amelia. <gasps> and a chance Attack. to make all her dreams come true. Hey. Only Paula. I'm gonna take this and give you oh. much better. Walt Disney Who Pictures whistled? presents. Who's that creep over there? It's whistling. <laughs> you guys, you could pause that mic. Thank you. All right. So what is it that I'm trying to convey to you guys? Obviously, if you've seen the movie, I'm not just talking about Mia's looks, okay? Which you know she needed some help. Look the apartment. But what she had going on is that she was extremely clumsy. The way that she behaves, she's spitting. She's just kind of slumping around. She's just walking and talking and acting a certain way, just not presenting herself in the way that she was actually made because within her blood was actually royalty. She's actually royalty. And so when she finds out, it's like, what? But she acted a certain way. She, she walked a certain way. She talked a certain way that was complete opposite of what you would think as royalty should act. She lived one way, but the truth is within her was something different. And it's kind of the same way with us. We live one way. We act a certain way. And some of us are just walking around. We're spitting around. We're acting all clumsy. We're doing all these things. But within us is royalty. Within us is the glory of God. Within us is the power of God. Now, Mia, thank God that when she found out that she had royalty within her, she changed something. She didn't keep doing the same thing. She started to work towards being able to live up to what was in her, and she started to work towards being different because once you find out what's within you, you can't live the same way. When she found out what was placed within her, she couldn't just live the same old clumsy, spitting, ridiculous Mia because she found out that she's royalty. And so tonight I wanna tell you that you can't keep living the same way. You can't keep doing the same thing because within you is the royalty. It's the glory of God. It's the Holy Spirit. That is what you carry and you can't walk the same way when you are carrying the Holy Spirit. You're not meant to slump. You're not meant to spit. You're not meant to have all these different things going on. We are to be set apart, set differently, set on a completely different level because we carry the Holy Spirit within us. It's important for us not to look the same way. Helicopter. In Ephesians 2, 1 to 6, it says this. Once, everybody say once. Once you were dead. Because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires 
and inclinations of our sinful nature. Used to, once were. What is this saying? This is saying that you used to live like that. You used to follow just whatever you wanted. You used to just live in disobedience and just do whatever you wanted all the time. You used to. The truth is, it's supposed to be past tense. You used to. You used to live that way before you knew and you had placed within you the Holy Spirit. And when you have placed within you the Holy Spirit, you're called to live differently. You're called to walk and talk and live and breathe in this amazing relationship with God that brings freedom to yourself and to other people. That's what the Bible talks about when Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. It's a life connected with him. And you have him within you all the time. Now the truth is, for those of us who are kind of doing whatever, we're back and forth, this verse is telling us that he, it, it says in uh, verse 2, it says, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. This is talking about the enemy. This is talking about even though you have the Holy Spirit within you, if you're choosing to kind of do things your own way and you're choosing to just live however, that you're letting the wrong spirit lead you. And the truth is, all of us are led by something, but we have the opportunity, we have the blessing to be led by what we carry, and what we carry is the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, I just wanted to say, what is it that you have been letting lead you? Is it what you carry, which is his presence? Or is it everything else, all the other stuff? Worship team, you can come on up. You know, so many of us are focused on just who we are and we hear that we're filled with his presence and we hear that we're filled with the Holy Spirit but we look at ourselves and all we see is a bunch of junk we don't see it we don't see that we carry the presence of God all we see is our messed up selves all we see is the stuff that we struggle with our problems it's like everything is hidden beneath the surface it's buried beneath the surface and we don't understand our value because we're so focused and we've been trained to focus on what we do, what we don't do, what we look like, what we don't look like, what we wanna see different, what we don't wanna see different. But the truth is there is value, there is presence living within you that is enough to change your life and to change the lives of those around you. I read this amazing story this week about a guy named Andy, about Andy. And this guy was going just out shopping and he was going to um, just like a couple of different garage sales and just whatever. And he just wanted to buy some stuff like for his apartment. So he went to this garage sale and he bought $5 paintings, okay? So he buys these $5 paintings and it's kind of like no big deal. It's it's whatever, it's 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 just, he's getting some paintings, it's just cheap. You guys know you go to Goodwill or you go to the garage sale, you get something. And so he goes and he spends $5 and he goes to get them reframed, okay? And when he pulls apart the frame, underneath of it is an Andy Warhol sketch. Do you guys know who Andy Warhol is? <laughs> if you knew who Andy Warhol was, you'd be real happy you found that sketch. It turns out that those $5 paintings that he bought, that he didn't think were any big deal, turn out to be worth $2 million. $2 million. Andy, goes shopping and finds an Andy hidden and has $2 million worth of paintings. I mean, it's unfathomable to me. It's like, what? And so that was the place he put himself in. He bought something he didn't think had much value. He didn't think that it was important. But then underneath the surface, when you started to pull things away and get past the old frame and get past the old stuff, what was there? Something of extreme value. And tonight I want to tell you that that's you, that's me. On the surface, we've got all this stuff, we've got all this mess, we've got, we've got this that we're struggling with, we've got that that we're struggling with, and we're frustrated and we're angry, and we're just trying to work through stuff because we're all going through the process of life. We're all not perfect. We're trying to work through it. But underneath, hidden, is something of great value, and that is the Holy Spirit within you. And whatever you're going through, you can know that that is what you carry. And yeah, there's some old frames and there's some dust and there's some things that need to be pulled out of the way and things that you need to work through so that we can really experience and see the Holy Spirit within you. We've all got stuff, but the truth is underneath of it all, it doesn't take away that the value of the Holy Spirit is hidden within you. 
just like that painting. You pull back the frame, you take away the dust, there's a $2 million painting underneath you and I. We get rid of all the stuff we've got go we're going through, we've got the junk, we've got the unforgiveness, the worry. But when I work through it in the presence of God and I pull it away, underneath is value and it's there right now. And so tonight I wanna tell you, know what you carry and do whatever it takes to let what you carry be released in your life and in the life of your friends and your family because this world needs to see and experience the Holy Spirit that is living within you. Tonight what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pray for you guys. And we're gonna have a time where we just go into worship and you just connect with the Lord. But if you want some prayer, if you, if you say there's some stuff that I have going on in the way, I've got, I've got some anger, I've got some this, I've got some that, that I, that I wanna see removed, I want you guys to line up. And we're just gonna come and we're gonna pray for you that that stuff would be removed. But if not, just worship, just give this time to God. And let's just focus on Him. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are literally within us, Lord God. And I pray that tonight no one would leave this room without knowing what we carry. And that is your glorious, amazing, phenomenal presence, God. And Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that every single thing that's blocking us, God, the dust, the old frame, whatever it is, would be ripped off and the value underneath, which is your presence, would be revealed, would be shown, God. And I pray that you would give us the courage tonight, Lord, to let go of what is blocking what we carry. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. Well, we're just gonna have a time of worship. If you want prayer, come on up. We would love to pray for you. If not, just give him glory.